Uh, if you are today, Ben Lang, first kid, you know, start the course there. Leading off and playing center field, number three, Brett Baker. That is second, playing right field, number one, Chase Stafford. That is third, the designated hitter, number 16, Andrew Bryant. That is putting up the shortstop, number 26, DJ Barone. That is fifth, playing first base, number 18, TJ Keith. That is sixth, and playing third base, number eight, Andrew Crossing. That is seventh, and catching, number 32, Matt Tampone. That is eighth, and playing second base, number 17, Jacob Moniz. Batting ninth, then playing left field number four, Scott Cromack. Starting pitcher for United States, that is number 39, Jordan Jackson Murphy. The head coach of the course there is Bob Franks. Now for your Tufts University Jumbo, leading off and playing left field number 16, Ben Leonard. Batting second and playing third base number three, Pat Solomon. And third and playing right field number eight, Jimmy Evans. Batting third up the catcher, number 11, Connor Burr. That's funny. He's e he's eavesdropping. Lovely weather today.
You guys look cute together. I didn't hear it, but I appreciate that. You like the sweet old couple sitting in the bench in the rain. Nope. So, do we not get a tent? Lovely. chilly, slightly rainy day here at Saul Gittleman Park on the campus of Tufts University, but we're still here to play some baseball as the Tufts Jumbos will face off against the UMass Dartmouth Corsairs in some non-conference play. Welcome everybody to the coverage of Division Three Baseball presented to you by JumboCast. I'm Andrew Howe here to take you through the action. I'd like to shout out Jordan Burke and Ethan Nito here behind the scenes working um, on a slightly rainy day. Of course the rain ideally will be calming itself down in the weather report in the next couple of minutes, but we are bearing through the elements right now, and so are the Jumbos and the Corsairs. Of course, these two teams met last April in a doubleheader here at Medford, where the Jumbos did take two out of those two games. Um, and on the other end, UMass Dartmouth starting off this season extremely hot, sitting at a 9-0 and record after a very successful road trip down into Florida. We see the, the Corsairs getting ready to take to the batter's box, and let's take a look at what they're running with here with our starting lineups. Leading off is Brett Baker in center field, followed by Chase Stafford, the right fielder. Andrew Bryant will be the designated hitter for today. DJ Perrone, who has been on an absolute tear this season, will be cleaning up. TJ Keefe rotating over to first base for this game. He will be in the five hole, followed by Andrew Posse, the third baseman. Matt Tempone behind the dish, getting a start here, batting seventh. Jacob Moniz at second base, and rounding out the order is Scott Cromack. We will be seeing Jordan Jackson Murphy, the starting pitcher, in just a little bit. 
On the mound today for the Jumbos is the sophomore, Connor Pedeswa. Had a very successful five innings of work in the debut game against MIT. We can take a look at the defensive alignment right now. In the outfield, left to right, is Ben Leonard, Jackson Duffy, and Jimmy Evans. In the infield, it is Patrick Solomon at third base, Ozzie Fleischer at short, Henry Fleckner at second base, and a new addition to the Jumbos lineup, the senior Connor Davidson sitting at first. The, the typical first baseman, Todd Stowicki, will be the designated hitter for today with Connor Bowman, the catcher behind the dish. No Clay Soul today for the Jumbos. Has typically been their DH in their first two games, but getting the day off as the Jumbos have a pretty busy schedule ahead of them over these next couple of weeks. They are going to finish off uh, the, the week here in Medford before taking to the road in California for a road trip during the school's spring break. The center fielder for the Corsairs, Brett Baker is up to bat, but Pedeswa is ready. And here we go. The third game at the newly minted Saul Goodman Park is underway. First pitch right in there for a strike. Pedeswa last game, five innings pitched, one earned run versus MIT. The starter of that game, Cameron Mayer, struggled a little bit and gave up a few runs in 3.2 innings of work. Um, but now it is Pedeswa getting the opportunity today. Mayer will be needed later this week, obviously, with a pretty busy schedule here for the Jumbos. They have three games in the next three days as that ball is fouled back. Brett Baker, the freshman, off to a pretty hot start, hitting 333 so far on the season with 13 hits. Is leading the team in strikeouts, but is able to get on base when that K rate is a little bit down. Pitch upstairs for a 2-2 count. The Corsair's offense has been the key to their success on their current nine-game win streak. And they're going to have to get through a tough bat pitcher in Pedeswa today as Baker swings and misses for the first out. Good start for Pedeswa, picking up a strikeout on his first batter faced as we'll head down the lineup here. Chase Stafford, the grad student, going to take to the box. Stafford saw some time as a pitcher in these past couple of years, has been primarily in the outfield this time around though. Having a very efficient season as well, 357 throughout the first nine games with a 974 OPS. Pitches down 2-0. Ball is grounded up the middle. That's going to be a base hit. So Stafford gets on the board to start off the offensive run for the UMass Dartmouth Cors Corsairs. And with the runner on, up comes the number three batter, Andrew Bryant. Bryant has been the primary first baseman here for this team. Is getting the start at the designated hitter spot today. Had a Incredible season in 2022, 415 batting average with a 1.162 OPS, 11 home runs and 34 RBIs. And this season, no exception as well. Pitch just outside. Bryant struggling a little bit as of late. Was on a 29 game hit streak combined with last year entering this year. It was broken on March 9th versus Concordia. Uh, and since then has been one, four, one for 14 in his last four games, looking to get back right here in Medford. Davidson, the first baseman here for the Jumbos, is holding holding on the runner in Stafford. Loono, just outside again. Patezwa seems to be finding his spot right on the outside corner, but the umpire not going to give him that call, and Bryant not going to be chasing there. And they seem to be slightly worried of Stafford taking off. Seven stolen bases in 2022. Only has about one, I believe, entering this game today. Has been caught a couple of times. Three times in 2022. One time this season. And Connor Bowman, an excellent defender behind the dish. Pitches fouled over the third base side. 
for a two and one count. The story here for the Corsair is, of course, the offense. Definitely the the focal point of this of this team, and finishing 18 and 23 in the last season, but starting off very very strong here in 2023. Pitches in there for strike two right at the knees. The Corsairs, of course, they returned many 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 of their players from last season uh, who had significant impact, and the new additions to their lineup either by transfer or from some new freshmen entering, have been very, very effective so far. Baker and Keefe, the two new additions here for UMass Dartmouth. Pitch is lined into center field. Duffy will be able to get a hold of it for the second out of the inning. So a hard hit ball by Bryant will not give him a base hit. He is now one for his last 15. And with two outs and a runner on, up comes the cleanup hitter, the electric DJ Perone. Down in the dirt for ball one. Perone has had an absolutely incredible season through the first nine games here for the Corsairs, hitting 559 with a patriotic 1.776 OPS. Just absolutely incredible stuff out of the senior. He's going to foul that one back. Six home runs in nine games. That's not something that you see every day. And he is on an absolutely incredible hot streak. Was Had a walk-off single over Penn State Altoona on the fifth as they continue to check back Stafford at first base. Of course, by, was no slouch in 2022 either. Led the team in RBIs, had a 362 batting average with a 1.07, but just even better offense this year. That pitch is upstairs and in for a two and one count. Pedezwa looking to get through the top of the Corsair order without any damage being done. And the ball gets past the first baseman and that is going to be Stafford moving over to second. New addition to lineup, Davidson unable to get a hold of that one. Not the best throw over by Pedeswa, but it does give a runner into scoring position for DJ Perone, which is never something that you want. For somebody who's been able to get a base hit in 56% of his at-bats so far this season, and in a hitter's count, Pedeswa now has to work his way out of a bit of a jam. The 2-1. Swung on, flew, flown into center field. Duffy has to run deep to try and pick that one up, but he has enough room right at the track to collect the final out. So two hard hit balls to Jackson Duffy, but he is able to get a hold of both of them at the end of the top of the first. The score, 0-0 zero to zero with the Jumbos coming to bat. Heading into the bottom of the first inning in this non-conference matchup between Tufts and UMass Dartmouth, we can take a look at the Jumbo lineup for today as, of course, a couple of adjustments to the way that they've been running things so far in the first couple of games this season. Leading off will be Ben Leonard as per usual, Patrick Solomon following him at third base. Jimmy Evans, the three-hitter, having not the greatest start to the season, will look to get a little bit hot um, here against the Corsairs. Connor Bowman going to be cleaning up. The new addition to the lineup, Connor Davidson, hitting fifth. Todd Stowicki 
going to be the designated hitter for today at the desig at the six hole, followed by Jackson Duffy, Ozzie Fleischer, and Henry Fleckner. We can take a look at the defensive alignment as well for the Corsairs. We did a bit of a preview, but just to reorient everybody, we have Cromack in left field, Baker in center, Stafford over in right, and the infield will be Posse, Perone, Moniz, and Keefe. Keefe, of course, playing a lot of games at catcher. We'll get the start at first with the catcher from last year, Matt Tempone, getting a chance behind the dish today. Andrew Bryant will be the designated hitter. And we'll be seeing Jordan Jackson Murphy, the freshman, on the bump today for the Corsairs. Has appeared in one game this season. Uh, sorry, has appeared in three games this season, primarily in a relief role. 2.2 innings pitch, one earned run for a 3.37 ERA. Has struck out three in the 2.2 innings that he has been able to pitch. So has been relatively effective here in his freshman campaign, now getting a chance in the starting rotation. Ben Leonard makes his way to the plate, the lefty against righty matchup to open up the hitting end of the first for the Jumbos. One zero is down for ball two. Ben Leonard, the sophomore out of Medfield, Massachusetts, has had a, a very effective first two games, hitting two for seven with a double and two RBIs. Also has three stolen bases on the season, so almost every single time that he gets on base, you're looking for him to go. The two zero also down three and zero. Jackson Murphy, a freshman out of Naughty Fiji, attended Korea Kent Foreign School. So some international play here for the Corsairs as the 3-0 is just at the knees for a strike. The Jumbos have had a very interesting first couple of games as Leonard tried to hold up on that one but will get called for strike two. Of course, that wacky walk-off hit by pitch against MIT. Uh, and then a, a bit of a comeback, I believe, in their last game against Brandeis. Count is full to Ben Leonard. The pitch just down. Good take by the left fielder as he'll start this game off with a walk. The rain's starting to slow down here at Gittleman Park. We hope that the forecast is a little bit better. We apologize for some of the um, rain drops that you can potentially see on our cameras. Uh, but we will work our do our best to have increase the the level of broadcast as as best as we can. Runner on first, Patrick Solomon, the third baseman, shows bunt. The ball gets past the catcher here in Tempone, and Leonard will take off and reach second base. Solomon yet to pick up a hit this season. Hit 300 in 2022 with a 759 OPS. Is 0 for his first seven here this year. The 1-0. Solomon again shows bunt, but the pitch is down, so no opportunity to try and get that runner over. You can see the third baseman in Posse slightly playing in, looking for an opportunity to potentially just grab that out at first as soon as possible. Solomon very quick, has three stolen bases despite not recording a hit. But we'll swing here on the 2-0, pop that one up, foul. Two one count, runner on second base as we open up the bottom of the first inning. Solomon again shows bunt and we'll get one right back to the pitcher. Jackson Murphy will get the out, but uh, Solomon does his job as Leonard will reach third base off of the sacrifice bunt. And a great opportunity here for Jimmy Evans early in this game. The right fielder here for the Jumbos was intended to be one of the great offensive stars, but is 0 for 7 to start off the season. Looking to get hot right now. And has a great opportunity here with a runner on. Evans has some power. Will be able to fly one up into the outfield if the Jumbos are instead just looking for a sacrifice fly. Jackson Murphy deals one into the dirt.
the one oh upstairs. Evans again hitting 329 with a 943 OPS, 47 hits alongside six home runs in 2022. He has the power, he has the offensive capabilities, just hasn't found it yet in these first two games. He's going to swing on that one and pop it up to the first baseman. Keefe looking for it, and it's actually going to drop here. TJ Keefe unable to pick up the ball in the cloudy sky. Leonard unable to run home on that play as it still was in the infield. They're not going to call the infield fly as there were no runners um, available for a force, so it just allows Evans to reach on an E3. So now two runners on here with one away in the bottom of the first. Connor Bowman, the catcher, will come to the plate. Bowman two for nine in the first two games of the season, has an RBI and two doubles, so has a very effective slug so far. Jackson Murphy trying to work out of an early jam here in the bottom of the first inning. Now with runners on first and third, we're not entirely sure what the Jumbos want to do in terms of trying to be sneaky along the base pass, but Evans and Leonard, both very effective runners, have a lot of speed. Could try to get fancy with them. As we say that, Evans will go, pitch a swung on and miss, throw over to second, is in time, but Leonard will get home and score. Evans is safe at second, a run scores for the Jumbos, and they pick up the first run of the game without a hit going over. So some sneaky work on the base paths. Tempone tried to just get the out at second base. There was no attempt to cut off the throw as they saw Leonard heading back to home plate. And so it is a 1-0 ball game to start things off. The 1-1. Evans is going to go again as that pitch is swung on and popped up. Evans is going to have to get back as it looks like the second baseman will be able to make the play. The throw is not in time. So... Moniz makes the makes the play on the pop up, and there's now two away. So two infield pop ups, one of them resulting in an out. Connor Davidson, the new addition to the Jumbos lineup, enters the batter's box on the right hand side, pitches upstairs for ball one. Davidson had seven at bats in 2022, had one hit and one RBI in that time spot. Very limited amount. Hard to, it's hard to, to tell what we're going to be expecting here out of the senior, but due to that small sex, um, small sample size, that ball is fouled right <laughs> towards us here in the press box. We could be thankful for this net behind us as uh, we might have gotten an unexpected haircut if things went a little bit differently. 1-1, one, one, two away. Jimmy Evans sitting at second base. Jordan Jackson Murphy will deal. Pitches check swing. Did he go? It doesn't matter. Going to be ruled a call strike. So a 1-2 two count, two outs. Jordan Jackson Murphy trying to escape this inning with only one run given up. He deals. Outside. Evans taking a very significant secondary lead over at second base. Attempted to go for that steal of third, but of course was forced back due to the pop-up by Bowman. Two balls, two strikes, two away. The pitch is swung on, drilled high to the left field line, and that is gone. Over the wall in right field. The high fence does not seem to matter too much here for Connor Davidson as he homers in his first step bat of the 2023 season. An opposite field blast for the new first baseman, and that is going to feel so good for the senior. The Jumbos early up three to nothing. So, he, so Davidson making the most out of his opportunity. His first time in the starting lineup, immediately hitting one out of the ballpark here at Gittleman. I'm not sure if that was the first home run that we've seen in right field, but 
proving that that fence not necessarily a problem. The 1 0 to Todd Stowicki is inside. So Stowicki normally will get the start at first base, but instead went over to Davidson this time around. Obviously paid off for the Jumbos, but there is no Clay Soul in this lineup, of course, as he gets the day off. 2 0 to Stowicki, swung on, fell back. The junior out of Chandler, Arizona, certainly having a solid campaign this season so far. Two for his first six with a double and a walk. Has a very towering presence. You can just see the height um, in that lefty position. I mean, we're talking about balls hit over to right field. Stoicki's definitely one who can get one over that one. 2-1 with two away. The pitch grounded off of the foot of Stoicki. That is going to be a foul ball. That's got to hurt. One of the most unfortunate feelings you can have as a baseball player, having that foul ball off of the foot. Stowicki's going to walk that one off. Looks like he's going to be all right. Two balls, two strikes here with two away. The Jumbo's off to a quick 3-0 lead, thanks in part to the lead to the home run off of Connor Davidson. Jackson Murphy deals, pitches popped foul. So Wiki looking to add on to this effective first inning here for the Jumbos. The 2-2 is dealt and upstairs for ball three. So we're going to have another full count here in the first inning. Rain's still coming down on us, albeit slightly. The payoff pitch. Swung on and drilled to right field again. Stafford's back. He's going to turn and look. That one is gone as well. Back-to-back, belly-to-belly for Davidson and Stowicki as it's a quick 4 to nothing lead for the Jumbos. Just ripped over that right field fence. I know us here at JumboCast, we're, we're worried a little bit about how some of the lefty bats would deal with this raised, elevated uh, fence in right field. Seems like none of the batters are having too much of a problem here. Davidson, the righty, and Stowicki, the lefty, both go in yard. And with four runs, with only two outs allowed, that might be it here for Jordan Jackson Murphy. We want we see, we see wonder if there is action in the bullpen for the Corsairs. The coaching staff going to come out and have a chat. Looks like they're going to at least rely on him to finish off this first, of course, Jackson Murphy given an opportunity here in the starting rotation for this game. Has had three relief appearances so far. Had looked good in both and in all three. And so was given this spot. Unfortunately not the the start that he wanted here to debut on the on, on the bump in his collegiate career. Jackson Duffy up to the plate, looking to add on to the offensive power that has been very imminent here in the bottom of the first inning. He has had a very effective first couple of games behind the dish. The 1-0. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Duffy hit 190 in his junior season, but has come off much better here this time around. Three for his first seven with a triple and a home run for a 1.143 slugging percentage. And believe that hit him so that's going to be uh, another time he gets to reach base a runner on here now for Ozzy Fleischer as the Jumbos are about to bat around the order if Mer Jackson Murphy is unable to get an out here in these next two ja Duffy was going to go pitches in the dirt there's going to be no play at second base Jackson Duffy records his first steal of the season. Surprisingly, despite a lot of the speed that we have seen from him in the outfield, not necessarily a frequent base stealer. Only had one swipe in 2022, has yet to record one until right now. So a runner in scoring position, Ozzy Fleischer, one of the team's best contact hitters, has a good opportunity to tack on another run for the Jumbos. He's going to take a pitch in there for strike one. The 
The 1-1. One, one. Popped up. Going to be a foul. So a 1-2 count now to Fleischer. Fleischer 3 for 6 so far this season. Has two stolen bases and an RBI. A couple of his hits, his hits have been via the infield. and But has been able to reach successfully based off of his very quick speed. The 1-2 is just down and away for a 2-2 count. Duffy's at second. A base hit would likely score him. As that is not what the Corsairs want. Has such a great start to the season, but quickly... Here in the first inning, their undefeated record suddenly at risk. The 2-2, chopped over to second base. Moniz will make the play, and that is the end of the first for the Corsairs. But the damage was done by the Jumbos. Connor Davidson and Todd Stawicki going yard over the right field fence. It is four to nothing as we head to the top of the second. Heading into the top of the second frame at Saul Goodman Park. The Tufts Jumbos coming off a very, very effective first inning, putting four runs onto the board. The UMass Dartmouth Corsairs have some work to do as they want to preserve their undefeated record. Don't want to go down here in their 10th game of the season. They will have Keefe, Posse, and Tempone to try and get some offense working against Connor Pedeswa. First pitch is drilled into left center field. Leonard is there to collect the out. And Keefe is retired to start off the top of the second. The third baseman, Andrew Posse, now comes to the plate. Has had a bit of a slow start to the season, but when you take a look at the numbers for 2023, very similar to his first year campaign in 2022, hit, hitting 192 with a 624 OPS. Going to take that first pitch in there for a strike. What Posse is successful at in terms of his skills at the plate is his ability to get on base despite not necessarily hitting for too much power. Four walks and six hit by pitches in 2022 has continued that trend. Eight walks in this season alone despite only picking up five hits on the year. So very, very effective in terms of seeing pitches out. He's going to chop that one over to short. It's going to be a tough play for Fleischer. He runs over, makes the play. Davidson unable to pick up the scoop. And it will be Posse heading over to second base. The throw over is not in time as Fleckner was unable to get the tag down. So a bit of a mishap there for Fleischer as that ball throw as that throw went into the dirt. They're going to bring Posse back to first. No, just to give the batting gloves over. So a runner in scoring position right now. Matt Tempone now has a good opportunity to try and get some work done. For the, for the Corsairs. The junior out of Smithtown, New York was the primary catcher for the Corsairs in 2022. With the addition of TJ Keefe, he has seen more time in that designated hitter role as Keefe, a D2 transfer. Played at Pace University in New York City. So Tempone getting an opportunity behind the plate was had a very slow offense had a very slow offensive season in 2022 219 average but has picked things up in this newfound role as he takes that pitch just up and outside a 1.299 OPS for Tempone two home runs four doubles. 
Eight hits. Pedezwa is going to turn back. Fleischer might have gotten him at second. He's going to be out. Posse caught with an early secondary lead as a nice pickoff move from Pedezwa will pick up the second out of the top of the second frame. It was a very close call. The coaching staff for Dartmouth having a conversation with the umpire crew. It was a tough it was tough to see up there, but it was a very nice play. The question is, did Posse get back in time? We take a look at this replay here. Uh, 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 an extra shuffle was all it took. And yeah, a, a bang bang call, but looks like the umpire's going to give the play over to the Jumbos. I believe we've, I believe we have set up umbrellas um, over our cameras to to make sure that everything kind of stays safe here in the rain. Pitches upstairs. Some newly acquired equipment here at JumboCast has been very ha helpful for us, but want to make sure all of that stays safe. I'm currently holding an umbrella in the commentator's booth as temp Tempone will work a walk on four pitches from Pedeswa. Next at bat, the second baseman, Jacob Moniz out of Dartmouth, Massachusetts, so right at home here for the Corsairs. The second base spot for UMass Dartmouth has been a relatively open battle so far, but Moniz has been the the best player out of the group of people fighting for that position as of now. Hitting 444, 4 for 9 with a double 3 RBIs and a stolen base. The 1-0 from Pedezwa is fouled back. Tempone is at first. He has one stolen base uh, in la of last out of um, 2022. Maybe not too much of a threat on the base path. Pitches upstairs. Two and one. Pitch to Moni, swung on and missed, strike two. The last game that UMass Dartmouth did play versus Wentworth, Moniz had a great game. Two for four, two RBIs and two runs scored, and all those runs mattered as the Corsairs did take that one seven to five. Pitch outside, full count with a runner on. Tempone will be going here on this next pitch. Connor Pedeswa looking to get out of his second inning after allowing two base runners without a run being scored. <laughs> Payoff pitch, runner goes upstairs as Moniz will work a walk. So two runners on with the nine hitter, Scott Cromack coming to the plate. Don't be fooled by Cromack being in the nine hole has been very effective this season, hitting 261 with a 435 slugging percentage, 828 in terms of the OPS. Something that has been very effective for uh, the Corsairs is their ability to slug a little bit better compared to 2022. A lot of these players have the averages staying in similar positions, but the slugging percentage going higher up. has ma uh, Cromack has matched his extra base hit total from last year already through the first nine games of the season. Had three extra base hits and already in 2023 has picked up two doubles and a triple with five runs batted in. Cromack, of course, having a very solid freshman year in 2022. Hit a little bit higher in terms of average, but the power is definitely here more this time around. He's going to take that first pitch for a strike. Has a good opportunity to flip the order around and potentially score a run for the Corsairs. They are currently down 4 to nothing here in the top of the second. Pedez with sets. Count 1-0. Oh, sorry. 0-1. Oh hanging breaking ball in there for a strike two.
So a good position now for Pedeswa looking to get out of this second inning after allowing two walks and a reached on error. He deals. In the dirt, nice block by Bowman. Nobody will go. Tempone, of course, at second base, not wanting to risk that against the very effective Connor Bowman. Bowman has thrown out three out of the four runners who have attempted to steal so far this season. You do not want to go unless you are very certain that you are quick enough to beat out one of the best defensive catchers here in the NESCAC. The one, two. In there for a strike three. Pedeswa works his way out of a bit of a jam. Allowed three base runners. Of course, had that helpful pickoff move at second, but two walks not going to yield anything as Cromack goes down on strikes. So only one hit allowed so far for the sophomore pitcher. We head into the bottom of the second score. Still four to nothing in favor of the Jumbos. We have a pretty busy week here at Jumbo Cast. Of course, we have baseball playing today. We have a lacrosse game tomorrow, and then the Jumbos will be right back here at Gittleman on Wednesday for another non conference matchup. Make sure to stay tuned to Jumbo Cast for all you all of your Tufts Jumbos needs. There's a new pitcher in here for the Corsairs quickly after the early outing here by Jackson Murphy was unideal, allowing four runs in his first inning of work. Entering the game for the Corsairs is the pitcher Will Pacheco, the junior, 5'10", out of Franklin, Massachusetts. This is uh, probably the better... Uh, maybe a, a more solid option here for the Corsairs. Of course, wanting to give their freshmen a bit of an opportunity here against the Jumbos. Unfortunately, didn't work out too well. But Pacheco has been dominant in his one game play pitched so far this season against Fitchburg State on March 6th, which is one week ago to the day. Had seven innings pitched, only one run allowed, three strikeouts. So a total ERA of 1.29. Pacheco, a transfer out of Division II Assumption College, where he put up seven games pitch with, uh, in a relief with, uh, in a relief role with a 7.36 ERA. Has given up a decent amount of hits in his first start here with the Corsairs. Allowed a .292 batting average against, despite only giving up one run. So. Potentially getting runners on base, but able to escape these jams. At least he was against Fitchburg State. As he's in a bit of an elevated role in a Division Three team for 2023. The nine hitter, Henry Fleckner, the second baseman for the Jumbos up to bat. Pitch is just inside. So it'll be a 1-1. Fleckner having a um, very nice opportunity to start at second base, replacing Kyle Cortese. Going to ground that one foul. Has made every opportunity worth it for him so far this season. Over the first two games, hitting three for eight with two doubles, four RBIs. He leads the team and runs batted in. Sorry. One, two. Two, Fleckner. Swung on and missed. Strike three. So Pacheco gets his first K of the day here in the bottom of the second inning. The Jumbos will get the order back around here for the second time. Ben Leonard coming to the plate. How do he walk his first time up? This is down for a 1-0 oh and, one and oh count. Pacheco deals just on around the knees. They're going to call that one a strike, so a one and one count. Yes, sir. 
a good spot there for Pacheco. He wanted that call on the inside corner. But Leonard going to stay strong. Of course, really great plate discipline so far this season. The pitch downstairs in the dirt for a 3-1 count. Leonard, of course, started last season on the bench, but got a very, very impressive uh, increased role later on in the season. He's going to ground that one sharply and in the gap between first and second for a base hit. So Leonard is on for the second time today as he picks up hit number three on the season, continuing his very strong start of 2023. There's one runner on, and coming to bat is Patrick Solomon. Solomon had a sack bunt in the first inning, which advanced Evans, who got to second base off of ball get that got past the catcher here in Tempone over to third. You can see him showing bunt again. Of course, Solomon haven't, hasn't had the greatest offensive start to the year, so maybe trying to play a little bit of small ball to get his back on the right foot. Posse playing in on the dirt, on the grass. No bunt shown. Solomon swings at that one and fouls it back. The rain's starting to lighten up a little bit here in Medford, but still a bit damp. They're going to check Leonard at first base, and he was caught sleeping. A nice pickoff move there by Pacheco will pick up the second out of the inning for the Corsairs. So two pickoff moves in the first two innings of play. One for Tufts, one for UMass Dartmouth. Pitches in there for strike two. Solomon now has to work with two away and nobody on base, which is a very different situation than where he was when he came to bat to start off. Pacheco deals in the dirt. Nice block by Tempone, although there's no runners on. Solomon still yet to record a base hit. This season, of course, was very effective for the Jumbos in 2022, hitting 300 and having that memorable walk-off grand slam come from behind victory over Colby. 2-2, swung on and missed, strike three. Pacheco is fired up as he goes through the order. 1-2-3. One, One hit allowed, but they got the pickoff at first. Pacheco has faced the minimum here in the top of the second. Score still 4-0 Tufts.
Entering the top of the third, Jumbos with a 4-0 lead after a four-inning, four-run burst in the bottom of the first. Connor Pedeswa still on the bump. Corsairs will go through the top of their lineup. It'll be Baker, Stafford, and then Bryant. Baker struck out for the 13th time this season, his first time up. The 1-0 is swung on and fouled back. Spadezza with two strikes, two strikeouts and two walks so far in his first two innings of the first start of his sophomore season. The 1-1 count to Baker is swung on, grounded right into the gap between shortstop and third. That's going to be a base hit for the center fielder of the Corsairs. So one runner on now for UMass Dartmouth. As Brett Baker, the freshman, gets on to first base to start off this third inning. Coming to the plate now will be Chase Stafford, the grad student, immediately following the freshman. Some age differential there. Pedesva will deal. Pitches upstairs. They were looking potentially for Baker to go. Believe that was a pitch out. Baker has yet to record a stolen base, has been caught stealing twice so far in his freshman year. Not going to go there. Pitches down for ball two. The 2-0 inside. So a 3-0 count. Pedeswa potentially facing an early jam here in the third inning. Will likely be told to hold here is, is Stafford. The pitch is in there for a strike. Three and one. Stafford singled in his first at bat of the game. Has been very, very good so far. Runner goes. Pitch is swung on. Drilled to right field. I believe that one is going foul. So the third ball that we've seen today hit into that right field corner. This one, unfortunately, for the Corsairs will sail just foul. Andrew Bryant on deck here for the Corsairs. 3-2 count. Pitch is swung on again, fouled into the right field bleachers, or where we would have bleachers if there was some additional seating here at Gittleman Park. The goal, of course, for Gittleman is to, to add a, an additional press box behind home plate. Unfortunately, the construction of that was delayed a bit, partially due to the construction of the green line. The hit and run opportunity is flied into left field. Leonard will be able to get under it to record the first out of the inning as Baker will return to first base. So because of the press box not being available, we have been um, relegated to an opportunity here um, for the press behind home plate. Unfortunately, yields no shelter for us from the conditions and the weather not being the kindest to us here of our second broadcast of the baseball season. Thankfully, the rain is starting to lighten up a bit and hopefully we'll keep our equipment dry for the remainder of this game. Andrew Bryant takes a big hack and misses for strike one. Andrew Bryant had a towering fly ball straight into the hands of Jackson Duffy, his first appearance today. The 0-1, right on the inside corner. Bryant not going to bite, so it is a 1-1 count. They still have Baker dancing on the first base um, path. Davidson holding him on. Of course, a pickoff attempt to first base was dropped earlier in this game, allowing a runner to get into scoring position in the first. The 1-1, one, one, right at the knees, strike two. The umpire calling some of those low strikes. It's going to be something to watch as we continue to move forward in this game. The pitchers might try to attack the lower end of the zone a little bit more because of that. One ball, two strikes, one away here in the top of the third. UMass Dartmouth trying to get 
onto the board here with their three hitter Andrew Bryant up. Pitch is fouled back. Count remains at one and two. The one two again. Swung on and missed. Caught on the breaking ball. Bryant down on strikes for the second out of the third. Nice piece of pitching there by Connor Padeswa. Bryant was not expecting that curveball to get in there. Swung on and missed, just not the time, not getting that timing correct. So two away now with the center fielder Baker still on first base. DJ Perone looking to get onto the board. Pickoff move, not in time. Perone hit a laser also to Jackson Duffy in the first inning as that was what finished off the first frame for Connor Pedeswa. The contact, the power is still there for one of the best hitters so far this season for the Corsairs and maybe for Division Three as a whole. I mean, the Jumbos have Jackson Duffy who's sitting hitting a 1.6 OPS, 1.7 OPS as well, but that's only through two games. I mean, to keep that level of efficiency up through nine is just absolutely incredible. And of course, the sample size is still relatively small in, as in terms of just the whole baseball season. But I mean, there's no sign of Perone light, you know, slowing down. Even the, the line out that he had today was hit really, really hard. 1-1, one, one, two away, runner on first base for the Corsairs. Perone takes one in the dirt. Baker will not go. Pedeswa looking to get out of his third inning scoreless today here at Gittleman. Two and one, two away. Pitch to the righty. Perone is taken in the dirt for a three and one count. Perone with five walks, only three strikeouts so far this season. So very disciplined at the plate as well. Can hit for contact and for a bit of power. Would need a little bit of both to get Baker home sitting at first base. The 3-1 taken for ball four. Baker hustles to second base. There's no play for a potential move over to third. But it is two runners on as Perone works a walk. So now a scoring opportunity for TJ Keefe. Keefe with a fly out his first time up. On, swung on that first pitch, so we didn't get to talk about him too much, but very interesting storyline here for the Corsairs. Playing first base today, but was a uh, backup catcher, I believe, for Division II Pace University, where he hit 240 with a 613 OPS, two doubles, eight RBIs, but transferring over to UMass Dartmouth for his junior season. Looking for a little bit more playing time, and he's been very effective at the plate so far. He's going to ground that one over to Fleckner. They're going to make the easy play at second. Fleischer is there to retire the side here in the top half of the third. So two runners get on, but no runs will be scored for the Corsairs. Score still 4 to nothing as we head to the bottom of the third. Jumbos will look to add on to their lead.
Bottom of the third here in non-conference action between UMass Dartmouth and Tufts University here at Saul Gittiman Park. Thank you for joining us here at JumboCast. I'm Andrew Howe, your play-by-play -play commentator for today. The third game of the season for the Jumbos working very, very well for them so far. They had a four-run first inning thanks to home runs off of the five-hitter Connor Davidson and Todd Stowicki going back-to-back -back alongside a run off of a bit of an error earlier in that frame as well. Will Pacheco out for his second inning of work. He had a very effective first, second inning as, of course, the starter, Jordan Jackson Murphy, unable to get things going for himself in the first. Jimmy Evans will pop one in foul territory. Evans had a single in his last at-bat. Pitch the the play was ruled as a single, but it was a pop uh, pop fly to first base was just misplayed by the first baseman Keith. Ball is grounded foul. So, despite the the scoreboard saying a base hit has been recorded for Jimmy Evans, I you know that he is not satisfied about that being the lone hit that he has in 2023. Of course, big expectations here in the three hole for the Jumbos, and he's going to take this 2-2 pitch swung on and foul back. So the Corsairs, of course, finishing 18 and 23, falling in the Little East Conference playoffs in 2022, not making it to a knockout stage, just falling in groups. Pitch is just outside. Pacheco wanted that call. But a large portion of this UMass Dartmouth lineup remaining here for, for themselves, and of course they have some new additions as well. Swung on, drilled into left field, but right into the hands of Cromack. He's going to record the first out of the inning. So pieces for UMass Dartmouth that are remain very similar to last season. Of course, Andrew Bryant, the first baseman, typically. Perone, Posse, Tempone, Viz Devin Vizina, who is currently sitting on the bench, alongside Cromack and Stafford. So a large portion of the lineup still remaining here. And, and then with the additions of people like Keith. And, of course, Pacheco now on the mound, both transfers, as well as Brett Baker, the freshman, who has had a very good start to the year. Things are looking up for them. Of course, they've won their first nine games, but are in danger of losing that streak today against the Jumbos. Connor Bowman takes one upstairs. 1-1 one, one count to the catcher in the cleanup spot. Pitch is spat on, ball two. The 2-1, in there for a strike. A nice spot there for Pacheco. Bowman flew out in his last plate appearance. 0 for 1 on the day. And that hits him. So the second hit by pitch today by UMass Dartmouth. And Connor Bowman will reach first with one away in the bottom of the third. And some potential danger now again for UMass Dartmouth as up to the plate comes Connor Davidson. I mean, we're talking about stats, of course, small sample size, but hitting 1,000 with a 1,000 on base in terms of just one at bat. A 5,000 OPS, a 5.0 OPS just with one home run. Of course, not a very efficient sample size. The ball gets past Tempone there as Bowman will reach second base. But one home run and two RBIs for Davidson in his first appearance here for the Jumbos in 2023. Might see a bit of an increased role this year. Of course, there is a bit of a crowded infield for the most part if you're considering Clay Soul to be part of that mix, either as a catcher or as a designated hitter. Nice stop by Tempone there. But can always platoon pieces in and out. Of course, players can you know serve at multiple positions. Not to mention that Connor Flavin also currently out with an injury, so could open up a spot for Davidson in what was already a pretty tough infield to crack for the Jumbos. 
2-0 count with one away. The pitch is swung on and grounded into the gap between second base, between shortstop and third. That's going to be a base hit. Bowman will round third. The throw home is not in time. A nice slide by Connor Bowman will get him in for the fifth run of the game for the Jumbos. As Connor Davidson, have yourself a debut here in 2023. A home run and now an RBI single as he reaches second off of the throw. A nice slide there by Bowman as well, avoiding a potential tag. The throw was potentially in time to Tempone, but just the positioning. Of course, Bowman, a catcher, knowing a lot of the situations there, was able to get just, just out of reach. And with Stowicki up to bat and a runner on second base, they're going to intentionally walk him to instead face Jackson Duffy. It's an interesting decision because although Stowicki has the home run, Duffy has been amazing behind at the plate so far this season. Was hit by a pitch, of course, in his first appearance today, but also has a home run recorded alongside a triple and a single. So two runners now, now for the center fielder of Tufts University. Duffy will take that one down in the zone for ball one. Davidson at second. Stowicki at first. Pacheco deals down in the dirt. Again, a nice stop by Tempone. Prevents the runners from advancing. Two zero count, one away. UMass Dartmouth trying to avoid even more damage being done by this Tufts Jumbos offense. The pitch swung on and fouled back into the stands. Our cameraman Ethan Ito is thankful for the uh, net that potentially blocked him from being in danger of a foul ball coming his way. We'll be talking to Ethan a little bit later on as we will have a fun segment for you in the sixth inning. 2-1 count. Duffy takes one upstairs for ball three. Jackson Duffy has had a very, very good campaign so far in his first two games. And now is another big opportunity to break this game even farther open. And Pacheco knows that this is a very big batter to get out of course, Fleischer and Fleckner, the next two lined up for the Jumbos, are no slouches of their own right, but just making sure that you can get Duffy out is a good situation, and that's not going to happen. Pitches in the dirt. Duffy will reach on a walk, so two times reaching base here for the tough center fielder, neither of them being base hits. Juices the bases for Ozzy Fleischer with one away. Now, Ozzy Fleischer, of course, Grounding out in his first at-bat today, but really just a great piece to have at the bottom of this lineup. Some chatter between Coach Svagdis and the umpires. It seems the pinch runner might be coming in. See Clay Soul getting out there. And it seems like Stowicki's day is over as Clay Sowell will come in. Potential this might have been just a plan to get both of them a couple of at-bats today, but interesting situation to stick him in as a pinch runner at second base. Could potentially score on a base hit from Fleischer. We know that he's able to hit for contact very effectively. Pacheco has the bases loaded with one away. Pitches in there for a strike. Upstairs, one and one. One thing you know about Ozzy Fleischer is that he is not going to strike out very much throughout the course of a season. Only five Ks in 127 at-bats. So he will be able to get the ball in play, which of course is a very good situation here for the Jumbos. He's going to sky that one over to right field. It is back, but he will be there to pick up the out. The right fielder making that play here for the Corsairs and Stafford, but 
tagging and scoring is Davidson. A sack fly for Ozzie Fleischer will get the sixth run on the board for the Jumbos. So another effective inning here for the Jumbos. They have two runs already on the board with two outs now. Henry Fleckner will come to the plate for the second time today. Had a strikeout in his last at-bat. And Pacheco trying to escape with only two runs being scored here in the third. Going to take that one outside for a ball. Fleckner, of course, leading the team in RBIs entering today. Has been clutch with the bat in the first two appearances uh, for the Jumbos this season. Have yet to... Take a loss here at Saul Gittemann Park, the new stadium here for the Jumbos. And Fleckner's been a very effective part of that. The 2-0 in the dirt. Again, a nice stop by Tempone. Count is 3-0. You assume Fleckner will hold on this pitch. Runners on first and second. That's Duffy at first and Sowell at second. The 3-0 taken there for a strike. Now the, the pitching staff for UMass Dartmouth has not been the, the, the primary part of their success in their nine-game win streak. They've had a couple of shutouts, but primarily the work has been done with the bat. Pitch is in there for a strike, too. We're going to see if... The Corsair bats can come alive as we still have a lot of baseball to play. But of course, a 6-0 deficit is not something that you want when you're already off to an amazing start to the year. Count is 3-2. and two. The runners will go here in this situation. Pitches down in the dirt for ball four. The bases are once again loaded as the Jumbos work their way all the way around the order. Ben Leonard going to come to the plate, looking to do some damage with two away. Pitch is just upstairs for a ball. Base is loaded, two away. The Corsairs might have this game blown open if Pacheco is unable to control Leonard here on this at-bat. The 1-0 is taken in for a strike. One ball, one strike, two away in the bottom of the third as Leonard will loop that one into left field, and that's in for a base hit. One run will score. Duffy rounding third will make it in as well. An RBI single for Ben Leonard gets two more onto the board for the Jumbos as they lead 8 to nothing here in the bottom of the third. So Will Pacheco, who had a nearly spotless game against Fitchburg State, only allowing one run. Now has allowed four in the second inning of work today. Solomon takes one upstairs. Of course, you can look at the numbers and potentially say that this is the numbers averaging out a little bit. Pacheco allowing a 292 batting average against in that seven inning one run affair. So while the hits came through, they weren't able to connect for runs. Solomon will foul that one down the third base line. A piece of something coming off of the bat of Solomon after that swing. We we're using metal bats, so I don't know exactly what happened there. It seems like Solomon is okay with using his bat again for this next pitch. He's going to stay in there. Count one and one, runner on second and first. As Fleckner and Leonard are looking to again advance off of a potential offensive opportunity. 
Patrick Solomon. 0 for 1 with a sack bunt and a strikeout today. Already up for the third time here in the third. The pitch lined into center field. But it will be Baker making the play. The inning is over, but wow, what another great offensive showing here for the Jumbos. They reach, they have two runs score on two different RBI singles as they now lead 8 to nothing here entering the fourth. Welcome back to Jumbo Cast coverage of Division Three Baseball. Entering the top of the fourth inning between Tufts and UMass Dartmouth. We apologize for some of the, the errors currently on the scoreboard. We're in the process of switching some directors and, and some staff around. Andrew Posse coming to the plate here for, as Connor Pedesla enters his fourth inning of work. Posse reached on an error his last time up. That was that ground ball to Fleischer with a errant throw. The count is 0-1 right now to Posse. Here in the top of the fourth inning, no, run, no outs so far recorded. We're working to get that scoreboard updated for you guys as soon as possible. And that's actually three strikes. The scoreboard on the... The big board in Gittleman was incorrect, and so Pedesla will get Posse looking on three pitches. Tempone comes to the plate, had he walk his first time up. Tempone, the powerful lefty bat, having a very strong hitting season, primarily in a DH role, although he's behind the plate today. Takes that one outside for ball one. Pedeswa deals in there for a strike. In the dirt, count is now two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one away here in the top of the fourth inning. Connor Pedeswa deals to Matt Tempone. Upstairs, Vomen unable to grab that one, so the count will be full. Three and two. Getting some just slight problems here with our scoreboard as Tempone will work a walk off of that payoff pitch. So there will be a runner on first, one away. Jacob Moniz, the freshman, coming to the plate. 
for the second time today. Had a walk his first time up. Pitch inside for a ball. The 1-0 inside. Moniz again just adding to his very impressive start to his first year as a Corsair. The freshman getting some decent run here for UMass Dartmouth. 3-0 and is the count as Pedesva is struggling to find the zone here with one on with one away and one on. Again, the scoreboard currently not updating right now. We're working to fix that problem as soon as possible. Pitches in there for a strike. So Pedesva finally finding the zone there. The 3-1, swung on and fouled back. Ooh, off the foot again. And that should be the scoreboard being fixed right now. Again, we apologize for these slight problems that we're facing here. Count is three and two with one away here in the top of the fourth inning. Pedeswa will deal and Moniz will take ball four. An attempted frame by Bowman will not fool the umpire this time. And there's two on with Scott Cromack coming to the plate. So while there has been Three scoreless innings of work for the Jumbo's starting pitcher. He has had runners on in, both, in all three innings so far, and now here in the fourth, again facing a jam with one away. Cromack had a strikeout to end the second inning his last time up as he swings at that one, grounded foul. Tempo not likely to go on a, on a steal, but of course always have to keep that in mind. There's been multiple balls hit into the gaps between either the second baseman and the first baseman or the shortstop and third baseman due to the Jumbos being in this double play depth formation. Ball is sailed into foul territory for strike two. Pedesva looks in for the signs from Bowman. Tempone on second. With Moniz at first base. Ball is down in the zone. One and two. A strikeout would be big for Pedesva here. Of course, the order will be turned back around with Baker on deck. But just making sure that there is the ability to just... Not worry about a potential run coming in. Always going to be important. The one two, Pedeswa will deal. Pitch is swung in and foul back. We'll we'll do it again. One ball, two strikes. To the nine hitter, Scott Cromack. Has six hits so far in his 2023 campaign. Looking to add a seventh here and potentially drive home the first run for the Corsairs. Podesva steps off and will look to reset on the 1 2 count. From the stretch, 1 2, Podesva deals. Foul back. The one two again. In the dirt, a ball. Tempone does not go. Moniz has a steal on the season, but of course with a 
Bit of a slower runner on second base. Not wanting to, to go for a double steal. Of course, a hit and run could be in play, but not sure if the Corsairs want to do that. Just trying to get it, just trying to potentially get runs the traditional way. Two balls, two strikes. Pedesma deals. Pitch is lined foul. So Cromack doing a good job at working the count. A extended at bat. Of course, hit for contact relatively well in 2022. 294 batting average on the season with a 374 on base. Pedeswa trying to escape this jam in the fourth. Pitch is lined foul. So one of the longest at-bats that we've had today. A battle between Connor Pedeswa and Scott Cromack. Jumbo's trying to face the top of the order for the third time with two away instead of one. Good pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Pedeswa wins the battle versus Cromack, and there's now two away in the top of the fourth. Baker will dig in for his third plate appearance. Has a strikeout and a walk. Sorry, a strikeout and a single. In his two appearances so far today. Two runners on. Swung on and missed for strike one. The Jumbos and Pedeswa specifically have gotten themselves into situations with runners on base. Multiple times today, Pedeswa has five walks alongside his five strikeouts in his first starting appearance of the 2023 season. In the dirt for a ball. But he has retired seven batters and allowed zero hits with runners left on base, with when, when runners are on base. So has had the runners get on, but so far today at least has not had them score or even potentially advance off of any hits. That might change here as that ball is skied into left field, but Leonard is right in the perfect position to retire Baker to end the fourth. So another situation where the Jumbos have runners on, but unfortunately for the Corsairs, UMass Dartmouth unable to get a run on the board for the fourth straight inning. Score still 8-0. to zero. We're going to head to the bottom half of this fourth frame. A new pitcher entering for the Corsairs, Chase Carey, the third new pitcher here for the Corsairs. Carey has had two appearances so far this season, has allowed, has had one start, five innings pitched in total with a 5.40 ERA. Three earned runs, five strikeouts in his five innings of work, allowed eight hits. And he'll have a tough start to this bottom of the fourth frame. Corsairs, of course, have struggled a bit in terms of the pitching so far. Jumbos have had themselves a bit of a day. Jackson Murphy allowing four through one, and Pacheco allowing four through two innings. Of course, UMass Dartmouth able to kind of burn through some of their pitching staff today because after this game against the Jumbos, they have five days off before a weekend double header against Bridgewater State. Chase Carey 
had his last appearance on the ninth in a doubleheader against Concordia College. Had four innings of work there, allowing three runs. So a relatively effective start for himself there and a win. And we'll try to continue his effective streak. Evans pops one up into foul territory. Posse looking to potentially make a play, but it's just out of reach. Evans today is one for two with a stolen base. The 0 one down low for a ball. It's been a steady drizzle here in Medford, Massachusetts, as we're constantly having to <laughs> wipe our equipment off and prevent some of the rain from doing some damage. So we apologize if some of the scoreboard, score bug, and maybe some of the cameras are potentially delayed at, at times. We're trying our best. We have a, a bit of a reduced crew today with, of course, this being a mid midweek game in the middle of the day. Classes are still going on at Tufts. It is our last week before spring break. The Jumbo is going to be using that opportunity to go on a bit of a road trip in California. Have a bunch of games scheduled against various opponents on the West Coast. It's going to be a good opportunity for them. Evans lines one into short to the shortstop. And Perone will be able to get that one into the glove to record the first out of the inning. One away here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The cleanup hitter, Connor Bowman, comes to the plate. Was hit by a pitch in his second at-bat alongside a flyout. The pitch from Carey fouled back. It's interesting because, of course, UMass Dartmouth coming in with a 9-0 and zero record. The Jumbos, of course, also have yet to lose a game, but some of their wins have been a bit shaky, to say the least. Had to capitalize on a couple of mistakes by MIT in their first win, and then, of course, against Brandeis, another close call. Pitch out of the zone, 3-1. and one. But the Corsairs, of course, went down to Florida, had nine very, very nice inning, sorry, nine very nice games, all resulting in wins. But now making their way back up to New England, have struggled so far against Tufts. Pitches upstairs, and Bowman will reach on a walk. And Connor Davidson comes back to the dish, has had... The best showing out of any offensive player so far today for the Jumbos. A home run and an RBI single. Has three of the eight runs batted in here for the Jumbos today. Carey looking to avoid the fate of the last two pitchers who have faced Davidson and hoping to retire him for the first time today and for the first time this season for the first baseman of Tufts. Strike one. The righty Davidson hit one over the right field fence, opposite field work in the first inning. He's going to pop that one up foul, count 0 and 2. Don't believe any action currently in the jumbo bullpen. Not sure if. Somebody was warming up previously, but Pedeswa has had four scoreless innings of work. Of course, is a starter, so maybe has an extra inning or so in left in him before they shift things over to the bullpen. But two hits only allowed here for the starter. Of course, five walks here. The pitch upstairs, a oh, one and two. It'll be interesting to see what the Jumbos decide to do with Pedesla. Of course, Coach Factus has three straight games, followed by that road trip that we were discussing earlier. So the Jumbos wanting to make sure that they keep their pitching staff rather fresh over this pretty extended run. The 1-2 from Carey is swung on, drilled straight back into left field. And a nice play there made by Cromack will 
get Davidson out for the first time this game. But three very hard hit balls by Connor Davidson. Coach Fag that's going to like what he sees here out of the backup infielder of the Jumbos. The senior trying to get some additional playing time. And so far, and although that one did not result in a hit, has had some really good plate appearances for his team. Clay Sowell entered the game for Todd Stowicki as a pinch runner last in the fourth. Sorry, in the third. We'll be making his first plate appearance today. Going to pop that one up. Posse looking to grab that one in foul territory. He will settle under it, but no. Cromack might have tried to call off Posse. And it, it the ball will not be grabbed by either of them. So... A bit of miscommunication. The ball has been difficult to see in this overcast sky in Medford. And that is the second pop fly that was, you know, potentially an easy out for the Corsairs that was dropped or perhaps mismanaged. Sowell had a very strong 2021 campaign. He, um, of course, had a bit of a slower last season, but has come off really strong here in 2023 through the first two games. Already has a home run, and he's going to launch that one into shallow right field. And the play will be made there by Stafford, and that's the end of the inning. So no runs allowed, but some decent work done there by Carey. Chase Carey, of course, working a scoreless bottom of the fourth score. Still 8 to nothing. UMass Dartmouth. We'll have Bryant, Perrone, and Keefe to try and get the scoring started for them in the fifth. Four innings of work completed here for Connor Pedeswa, allowing a, a good amount of walks. I believe he has five today, but five strikeouts, only two hits here for the UMass Dartmouth Corsairs, who have had an electric offense through their nine-game opening win streak, as they will look to continue that presence and maybe add some offense to what has otherwise been a rather disappointing game for them. The heart of their lineup is currently up. Andrew Bryant going to ground that one foul. Sorry, apologies, that is Chase Stafford at the plate. He's one for two today, so one of the two hits has belonged to him. It's also flown out. Pedeswa deals, the 1-1 is swung on and fouled back into the chest protector of Connor Bowman. We can see some action here in the jumbo bullpen right now, as this may be Pedeswa's last inning of work. I believe that is Gavin, sorry, Justin Wells potentially warming up for them. Line into right field. Going to be a tough play for Evans. He dives and not able to get there in time. Bryant's going to round first. Head over to second. It's a double for the right fielder of the Corsairs. And that might be the start of it. a good offensive stretch. The Corsairs need to get the scoring going here in the top of the fifth. And a double by Andrew Bryant is certainly a good start.
Apologies. That was Chase Stafford in right field getting that hit. Bryant now currently up to bat as it appears that there might be some concern with Stafford on that last play. Came up a little bit slow there on that turn around first base. Stafford looks like he will be staying in this game, at least for the moment. And now Andrew Bryant, this time for real, will be coming to the plate. Apologies again on the misnaming um, there. My score sheets have been thoroughly dampened due to the rain. Runner on second now for the Corsairs. They have Perone on deck. Bryant, the lefty, is up to bat against Pedeswa. Pitches upstairs, 1-0. One ball, no strikes here to Andrew Bryant. Has a strikeout, 0 for 2 on his day so far here in Medford. Pedeswa will deal. Swung on. Flied into center field. Duffy will get there. Tagging is Stafford. He's going to try to go for third. The throw is going to be cut off by Fleischer. And it is a nice piece of hitting there by Andrew Bryant. Getting the runner over to third. One out here in the top of the fifth. So Stafford had some potential concern with the with potentially one of the legs after collecting that double, but legging that one out nicely to get to third base on that sacrifice fly. And now a good opportunity here for the Corsairs to cut into this jumbo lead. DJ Perone up to bat. Has had a walk, 0 for 1 on top of that, and Coach Spagdis potentially going to have a conversation here with Connor Pedeswa. Has had scoreless, has been scoreless so far, only three hits allowed, but has given up five walks and has had that pitch count extend quite a bit. Don't have a full reading on that, of course, the, some of the stats not completely updated, but there is action here in the jumbo bullpen. We might see some changes made soon. Pedeswa going to stay in the game for now to at least face Perone. TJ Keefe is on deck. And that, again, another really big piece here for this Corsair lineup. This is a really good opportunity for them. They have a runner on third, the best hitters coming to the plate. Perone already with 19 hits on the season in nine games. Averages about two and a half RBIs so far per contest of the 2023 season. Going to take that pitch inside for a ball. Stafford is at third. You saw him tag on that fly ball to Duffy and would likely do the same on another ball hit into the outfield. Down low, 2-0. and You have to be careful around UMass Dartmouth's best hitter. Perhaps the conversation here from Coach Vagdis was to be very, very cautious and pitch potentially around some of the edges. Not wanting to give up a meatball to Perone. He takes that one for a strike. Nice work for Pudeswa to grab that inside corner. Count is two and one. Pudeswa deals, pitch grounded up the middle. That's gonna be a base hit. So Perone will capitalize on the RBI opportunity into score is Stafford and the first run of the game for the Corsairs off of a single by the, clean, by the cleanup hitter of UMass Dartmouth. And that might be it for Connor Pedeswa as he did not get that run in to score. Perone reaching off of that RBI single. And Connor Pedeswa will exit, responsible for the runner on first base, but so far four and a third innings pitched with five strikeouts and five walks. So if the run fails to score in from Perone, it would be another one-run outing for Pedeswa in his second appearance, one in relief and now one at 
um, the start. And we'll see who the Jumbos have in to pitch. I believe they had Justin Wells, the junior, warming up. And we'll see if that is who the Jumbos decide to go with here. So Wells comes in holding an 8-1 lead. Of course, Pedezzo would be the pitcher of record if the result holds. But I believe this is the first appearance here for Wells, the junior this season. And he'll have a tough uh, set of batters to try and get out. Of course, only one out recorded here in the top of the fifth. It'll be TJ Keefe, Andrew Posse, and potentially Matt Tempone up to bat. We thank you for tuning in with us here at JumboCast on a rainy Monday afternoon. Again, the drizzle is starting to let up for a little bit. My laptop actually just fell asleep. I was worried for a second as it is rather laden with rain, but it appears it is all good. We will keep you updated on the statistics as soon as we possibly can. TJ Keefe, the D2 transfer at a pace, is coming to the plate. Has a good opportunity here, only one away. And UMass Dartmouth already with one on the board here in the top of the fifth. Wells will deal his first pitch in for a strike. Theo one is upstairs. The lefty deals. Grounded to short. This could be two. Fleischer to Fleckner. They're going to go to first. The scoop completed here by Davidson. That's a double play. And that is the end of the fifth inning. What could have been a good offensive run for the Corsairs was stopped short as a 6-4-3 double play wraps up the top of the fifth. One run did score off of the RBI single of Perron. But the score is still 8-1. to one. Jumbo's with a comfortable lead. As we head to the bottom of the fifth inning.
We're entering the bottom of the fifth inning here at Saul Gittiman Park. Chase Carey comes out for his second inning of work as he looks to face off against Jackson Duffy, followed by Fleischer and Fleckner. It's the bottom of the Jumbo's order. Duffy's going to take that one outside for ball one. Two and oh. Connor Pedeslo, four and a third innings of work in that start. Pitches lined in left field. That's a base hit for Jackson Duffy. So Duffy continues his strong offensive start to the season. And a very strong game for the Jumbos as a whole today against UMass Dartmouth. Pedeslo was named NESCAC Pitcher of the Week last week after five innings in one run in a relief appearance from following Cameron Mayer in their the Jumbo's debut against MIT. Runner on first, no no batters retired here in the bottom of the fifth. Here comes Ozzy Fleischer. Carry deals. Fleischer shows bunt, the pitch is upstairs, so he will hold that one back. Posse is on the grass at third base. We'll look to try and make that play if the bunt does hold through again. Carey taking a glance back at Duffy with Keefe holding him on at first base. Fleischer, will he show bunt again? It looks like he will not. Swinging away and popping that one up into right field. Stafford is back at the track at the wall. It's off the wall and that's going to be a base hit. Duffy will round second. He's going to head to third. Is in there in time. Fleischer didn't know for sure if that one was going to be an out or not, so was caught at first base. Didn't want to get thrown out by Stafford. But it is a very hard hit single for Ozzy Fleischer, showing a little bit of power with the bat. Runners on first and third. Still nobody away as Carey will face a bit of a jam with nobody out. Unfortunately, I have messed up Chase Stafford um, again. He has been taken out of the game, I believe, and instead it is Andrew Clotier in right field. He was the one unable to make that play off the wall. But he did hold Ozzy Fleischer to just a single. Clotier, the outfielder, number 28, junior out of Clemsford, Massachusetts. Bottom of the Jumbo's order, doing some good work here in the top, the bottom of the fifth. Fleischer. Held back at first base by Carey. Henry Fleckner looking to add to the offensive damage. He is 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. Jumbo's looking to bat around the order for the fourth time in just the fifth inning. Fleischer, of course, a threat on the base paths. So Carey not wanting to make sure there's only one runner in scoring position and not two. Two steals so far on the season for the shortstop. 0-1 oh is the count. None away. Pitch hits Fleckner. And that's going to load the bases. The third hit by pitch for the Corsairs out of their three pitchers. And another chance for the Jumbos to do some damage. They have runners on first, second, and third. Fully juiced are the bags. And to the plate comes the top of the Jumbo order. Ben Leonard, the lefty. Looking to do some damage once again. Carey. In a bit of a precarious situation. That ball is lined down the right field line. Is a base hit and going to be extra bases. One run scores. Here comes Fleischer. He will score as well. Fleckner holds up at third. It is Ben Leonard with an RBI double. Two runs in for the Jumbos as they have hit the double digit mark in the run category 10 to 1 in their favor. A great piece of hitting out of the lefty, Ben Leonard. Now has two hits on the game. 
with two RBIs. Conference at the mound. Carey, of course, giving up some pretty solid work here. Patrick Solomon now with an opportunity again. Two runners still in scoring position for the Jumbos. Still nobody away. Pitch is wild over the head of Tempone. Unfortunately for the Corsairs, bouncing right back to him. Fleckner is a speedy base runner at third base, but would have been a one-way trip if he had attempted to go off of that wild pitch. Count 1-0, and runners on second and third. Jumbo's looking to extend their lead to double digits here in the, bot the, the bottom of the fifth. Check swing, strike called by the home plate umpire. Carry deals in the zone again for strike two. Solomon is 0 for 2, has a strikeout and a sacrifice bunt. Carry looking to record the first out of the fifth inning. The pitch, 1 2, foul back. The 1-2 popped up into foul territory. Keith looking and the ball will sail over the net. Scores Jumbo's 10, Corsair's 1, bottom of the 5th. 1-2 count. Jumbo's trying to extend their lead again. And what has been a Pretty difficult outing for the Corsair so far. That's grounded up the middle. A nice play was made there. And now they're going to try to run Fleckner back to third. Runners will stay in their positions. Perone making the, the easy out at first base. And a nice job by Keefe to hold the runners and prevent them from scoring. So no additional damage has been done or was done by the Jumbos off of that ground out. Jimmy Evans coming to the plate. It's now one for three on the day for his fourth plate appearance. Carey will set. Pitches skied into left center. Ball is caught there by Cromack tagging and scoring is Fleckner. And it's a sack fly for Jimmy Evans. He gets another RBI on the day. Score 11 to 1 in favor of the Jumbos. No real contest there at the plate. Cromack didn't want to m potentially miss a throw and allow for two runs to score. So instead, just cutting it off in to Perone. So the lead is now 10. I'm not certain about the mercy rule or the potential early ending rules in Division Three baseball, but that might be in play now as we have reached a 10-run lead with Connor Bowman coming to the plate. Carry deals. Bowman will take one upstairs. Bowman today is 0 for 1, has reached base on a walk and a hit by pitch.
The 2-0 from Carey is taken upstairs. Oh, in there for a strike. Right on that outside corner. Two balls, one strike here in the bottom of the fifth. Taken downstairs. Count now three and one. Carey trying to escape this fifth inning with only three runs given up. Leonard at second. The pitch. Bowman takes it upstairs, and that is another walk here for Chase Carey. And now two runners on. The force now potentially in play with two away. And here comes Connor Davidson once again. Two for three, a home run and a single for driving in three runs on the day. Speaking of driving in runs, Ben Leonard has four RBIs today, leading the way for the Jumbo so far. He's going to triple his total for this season. Now it's six. Coaching staff having a conversation. That's going to be it for Chase Carey. As some more backup comes in here for the Corsairs. Carey had a strong fourth, unfortunately allowing three runs there in the fifth inning. And he will not be able to finish the frame. In comes Sam Watts, the right-handed pitcher, the freshman out of Rehoboth, Massachusetts. This, I believe, is the first appearance for Watts. Corsair is potentially looking for some new pieces to, to try out here with the score in a rather unfortunate state. Watts has pitched actually this season, has appeared in three games, allowing Three runs and two innings of work for a 13.5 ERA. Of course, a very small sample size off of that, but so far has not been super successful, even in the Corsair's first nine games, which have been very successful in terms of the win column. Last appearance was on March 9th versus Concordia College, where he was able to record one inning of work with only one run allowed, three hits, and two strikeouts. Connor Davidson comes to the plate, runners on first and second. It's Leonard and Bowman on the bags. The righty Davidson looking to add to his already incredibly successful season debut. Takes that pitch down in the zone for a ball. The 1-0 is fouled back. Corsairs, again, had a great opportunity to maybe put some runs on the board in the top of the fifth. They got one in off of the RBI single of Peron, but next batter up, Keefe grounded into a 6-4-3 double play, stopping any momentum for the Corsairs offensively there. Two balls, one strike, two away. UMass Dartmouth looking to get back into the batter's box, try to cut into this lead a little bit in the top half of the sixth inning. Watts will deal down in the zone. Down out of the zone, I should say. Count now three and one. Two away still, so force out at any base right now except for home. Corsairs looking to escape this fifth. The pitch. Ripped foul.
Three balls, two strikes. Bowman and Leonard will be going on the pitch. A base hit could score two with Bowman being a pretty average base runner. The 3-2 is down and away, so the base is loaded once again. Clay Sowell going to come to the plate to try and extend this lead. So Watts allowing a walk in his first batter face today. Sowell will come to the plate for the second time. 0 for 1 after replacing Stowicki in the middle of the game. You wonder if that was an intended plan out of Coach Zagdis. Sowell will fly that one back. Of course, Stowicki starting off the game very successfully. Had a walk, I believe, in a wa uh, and a home run as well, which immediately followed the home run of Davidson in the first inning. And then Stowicki was replaced by Bo by Sowell here. Of course, with Davidson in the lineup today, allowed for Sowell to, to start the day on the bench as Stowicki was relegated to the designated hitter spot. Now getting some run here. Sowell flies that one to deep left field. Cromack running, going to make the play pretty deep into the outfield. So Sowell with a fly out to end the fifth, but more damage done by the Jumbos. They tack on three as the fifth inning concludes. UMass Dartmouth is going to have to put some runs on the board to keep this game alive for themselves. We'll head into the top of the sixth, a 10-run lead for Tufts. We've played five here in Saul Gittiman Park, campus of Tufts University, the home squad, the Jumbos up to a 11 to one lead as we enter the sixth inning. Justin Wells had a effective two thirds innings of work, relieving Connor Pedeswa after his impressive one run outing. One batter faced by Wells resulted in two outs as a double play was conducted by Fleischer and Fleckner in the middle infield. But now the first inning of work full for Wells. He will have the six, seven, and eight batters due up for the Corsairs. Of course, M UMass Dartmouth down 10 runs at the moment. Going to need some offense quick. Time running out to keep their undefeated season alive. The third baseman, Posse, coming to the plate. He's one for two with a reach down error and a strikeout today. Of course, no runs, only one run allowed by Pedeswa, but he did allow a, run, a lot of runners on base, ending his start with five walks alongside five strikeouts. And a couple of reach down errors as well led to a couple of jams for the Jumbos defensively. Fortunately for them, they were able to work out of most of them with the exception of that one RBI single by Perone. Posse takes one down and inside. Count now one and one. Wells throws one 
Same spot, same result. Count two and one. That pitch is lined into foul territory. Count two and two. Posse is able to work these counts very well. Has eight walks entering today. Has yet to record one here in Medford. He takes one down and down and away and down and in. Sorry again for a full count. Catcher Matt Tempone is on deck, looking to start something offensively for the Corsairs. The lefty Wells has a 3-2 count with none away here in the top of the sixth inning. And the pitch is swung on and missed. Posse goes down on strikes. So the junior retired for the third time today. And one away now here, Matt Tempone coming to the plate. The junior entering this game batting 364 on the season with four doubles and two homers, six RBIs. Has two walks and will now ground that one right back to Wells. He'll make the easy toss to first. Davidson will be there and that is the second out of this sixth inning. It's a nice play by Wells. It's kind of a behind the back and made sure that he had an easy throw over to first because he had some time. And there's now two away with Moniz, the freshman, coming to the plate. First pitch is in there for a strike. The 1 swung on, shallow fly ball into right field. It's going to be a long run for Evans, but he makes the play. A nice catch by Jimmy Evans using that speed in the outfield. That's going to be the end of the top of the six. A scoreless frame for Justin Wells as we will enter the middle of the six. And as we head to the bottom of the six, it is time for our favorite segment on JumboCast, the sixth inning showdown. I'm going to welcome our director, Ethan Ito, in. Ethan, pretty cold day out here, don't you think? Yeah, definitely a little chilly. Oop. Really we unfortunately need to get him online here. Ethan, can you hear us? Hello, hello. Am I, am I on? I yeah. believe you are on and audible. Welcome to the show. Ethan has been our director and camera person for the past couple of games here on JumboCast and is here for a little fun activity we like to call on JumboCast the sixth inning showdown. Now, Ethan, what we're going to do here, of course, is compare some of the mascots and see what they would do in a one-on-one -on -one combat battle. Of course, the Jumbos out of Tufts University against the Corsairs of UMass Dartmouth. You take a look at the statistics here. I mean, what are you seeing right off of the bat? Well, obviously, you see that the elephant's a lot bigger than the pirates. However, I mean, you see what? That's a uh, hundred times more, as hundred times heavier than the pirate. But you know that the pirates can work in a team, um, and they have weapons. I mean, the el uh, the elephants have tusks, and I think it's an important question to consider whether they're going to be fighting on land or at the sea. Mm. So, do you think in the sea, on sea, you mean like in a boat, correct? Because the corsairs, correct. the pirates typically are on these boats as they sail the seven seas. The The question is, I mean, if, if Jumbo was able to approach the boat and even land, get on top of it, would that, would that weight be a bit of an issue in terms of potentially taking everybody down with the ship? Well, I'm sure it just takes one good poke from the tusks to put a good hole in the boat, make it start sinking. But, but that's kind of a one-way trip for Jumbo at that point. That is true. It's, it's kind of a, you'll win at what cost, but at what cost. So my question to you, if on land, and if you know these weapons are in, in, in possession here for the Corsairs, how many of them would it take to potentially take down Jumbo the Elephant? I would say at least 20, just because Jumbo's, 20. Jumbo's big. Um, obviously, 
you know, Jumbo has the tusks, also has, you know, the mass and um, the size advantage. And so it would definitely take a good, um, um, it would definitely take a, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of pirates to, to make it happen. Well, that's been the sixth inning showdown. 20 Pirates is the count from our producer, Ethan Ito. Ethan, thank you so much for joining us here as we will get back into the swing of things. The bottom of the jumbo lineup again at the dish. Jackson Duffy takes one downstairs for a ball. A new pitcher entering here for the Corsairs, Nick Pappas. The righty sophomore coming into play. Duffy skies that one into the infield. Who's going to call that one? It will be Perone to make the out. So one away here in the bottom of the sixth frame at Gittleman Park. Ozzie Fleischer is going to show bunt with nobody on. And not going to be able to hold up on that one, so takes it for a strike. Pappas with his first appearance, I believe, of the season for the sophomore pitcher. As Fleischer will ground that one, finds a bit of a gap. Perone is there, but there's no play at first base. The speedy Fleischer will get there in time as he hits it to his position that he plays on defense. And that's an infield single for Ozzie Fleischer. It's what he does best, hit, get the ball in play and use his speed to find opportunities on the base paths. Runner on first with one away. They're going to have Henry Fleckner come to the plate now for the Jumbos. Papa's 5'10", 175 pounds out of Carmel, New York. Still a pretty menacing presence on the mound for the Corsairs. Pitches taken for a ball. The 1-0. -oh. Swung on and missed. The breaking ball doing some good work. Fooling Fleckner a bit there on that one. Fleischer quick on the base pass. Not sure if Tufts would want to steal in this situation. Of course, they already are up by 10. Pappas will deal. Pitches inside for a ball. Fleckner is 0 for 1 on the day. And his fourth the plate appearance so far has a walk and a hit by pitch as well. So has yet to get the ball in play. Also had a strikeout his first time up. The pitch, check swing. Fleckner did hold up, so the count extended to 3-1. and one. Three balls, one strike, one away here in the bottom of the six in non-conference action between Tufts and a UMass Dartmouth. And that's ball four. Fleckner will head over to first base on a walk given up by Pappas. And that'll bring the Jumbos back around for the fifth time today. It's been an offensive showcase for the NESCAC team. Of course, looking to extend on what was a relatively successful season in 2022. They were ranked for a period of time, but failed to make it to the NCAA tournament after following in the, falling in the NESCAC quarterfinals. Ben Leonard has been effective to the max today. For the Jumbos is 3-for-3, three three, as well on top of a walk, 4 RBIs, a run scored, and a stolen base. One ball, no strikes to the leadoff batter for the Jumbos. Swung on and missed, strike one. The rain, fortunately for us, and our equipment has subsided significantly. as we are under a winter weather advisory for the next couple of days. 
Leonard will swing and miss for strike two. But could potentially affect some of our games. Already has, actually. The, I believe, women's lacrosse game scheduled for tomorrow pushed up from 7 p.m. to 5 p.m. Make sure to tune in for that on Jumbo Cast. Riley Daniel will be on the call for that. One ball, two strikes to Ben Leonard. Pappas will deal. Upstairs, two and two. Pappas looking to record his second out of the day. The pitch, 2-2, two, two, is swung on and popped up to right field. Play is made. Runners will stay put. Nice play by Clotier out there. We'll make sure that there is two away in the sixth. Patrick Sullivan coming to the plate. For the fifth time today is 0 for 3 with a sacrifice bunt, so has yet to reach base successfully today. Of course, Solomon yet to record a hit this season after having a pretty solid season in 2022. Despite a lot of the offensive power for the Jumbos, 11 runs off of 10 hits, Solomon not accounting for one of them so far. The 0-1, swung on and missed, strike 2. The pitch down in the zone, stopped, sorry, <laughs> I keep saying down in the zone when it's clearly not in the zone, into the dirt, Tempone making a nice stop, runners did stay put there on that ball, one ball two strikes, Pappas trying to make his first outing of the season a successful one, swung on and missed, strike three, Solomon is down on strikes, and Nick Pappas with a scoreless frame to open up his season. The Jumbos left two runners on base, and they will enter the seventh. We're two-thirds of the way through here on Jumbo Cast. Score 11-1 to in favor of the Jumbos. Three innings left to go here in this rainy Monday afternoon ball game between the Tufts Jumbos and the UMass Dartmouth Corsairs. 11-1 to is the score. The Jumbos have had a very successful day both at the plate and on the mound. Connor Pedeswa followed by Justin Wells have accounted for only one run allowed and four hits by the previously smoking hot Corsairs. It'll be Cromack and then the top of the lineup here for UMass Dartmouth. Lefty deals and in, into the zone for strike one. We will see Cromack followed by Baker and then the replacement right fielder in Clotier pitches out of the zone, one and one. Wells has had a one and two-thirds inning pitch so far. 
yet to give up a run. The 1-1 one -one is swung on and missed, strike two. The pitch, upstairs, wall two. Kromak, you remember in that last at-bat that he had, a battle, an extended battle with Connor Pedesla, which unfortunately for Kromak resulted in a strikeout after a very extended appearance. That ball is chopped to the pitcher. Wells going to make a strong throw over to Davidson to record the first out. So Cromack will fall to 0 for 3 on the day. Coming up to the plate is Brett Baker. Baker is 1 for 3 on the day. Wells now with two scoreless innings of work will take that one in for a ball. Count 1-0, here's the pitch. Swung on, chopped into second base. It's going to be a tough play for Fleckner. He runs in, makes the throw for out number two. Henry Fleckner showing off that glove, charging in to pick up the chop. And now two away as Andrew Clotier comes to the plate. The righty takes strike one. Pitch is fouled back 0-2, so already Claudier in a bit of a hole. Takes that one in for a strike, right at the letters. So in his second at-bat of the season, Andrew Clotier goes down on strikes. Justin Wells works another scoreless seventh inning. Score remains 11-1. to We're going to stretch as we work to close this game out in Medford. So a quick update for everybody here as we enter the bottom of the seventh. Of course, this is typically the time of the seventh inning stretch, but there was no take me out to the ball game played. Instead, it is staying alive by the Bee Gees. Of course, could inspire some dance moves, but not necessarily the classic anthem t played at the national pastime of the United States. Staying alive are the Jumbos right now. They've had an offensive showcase through the first six innings of work. 11 runs off of 10 hits. And that man up to bat, Connor Davidson, has been very effective. It's actually, apologies, a pinch hitter, Owen McKiernan, the freshman out of Durham, New Hampshire, getting an opportunity here for the Jumbos. And he swings at the first pitch, popped up to right field, right center, I should say. 
as the play will be made by Brett Baker, the first out recorded. I believe that was the first plate appearance for McKiernan of his jumbo career. Made some good contact, it's just a bit under it on that first pitch as he skies out for the first out of the bottom of the seventh. So with that, it means that as uh, Bowman takes that pitch, Pappas will deal. Pitch is grounded to, sec to the first baseman. Sorry, Keith will make the play over. Pappas with a nice run to first base will protect the bag and record the second out. So as I parse through my incredibly damp score sheets, I, I was intended to tell you that McKiernan has pinch hit in for Jimmy Evans. So that is going to be the end of the day for one of the Jumbo's lead offensive players. McKiernan likely going to be taking Evans' spot in right field following this inning. As Davidson. Foul ball. Now, I saw the numbers. Um of McKiernan, and, which is 36, and thought that it was actually Connor Davidson, number 38, who is now up to the plate. But as I was saying, entering the bottom of the seventh, this is one of the pe people responsible for a large portion of the offensive firepower for the Jumbos today. Home run and an RBI single for Davidson, the senior, getting some good run and capitalizing with a very strong day at the plate today. Pitches popped up, out of play. Count two and two. Pappas trying to work a scoreless seventh. He'll throw that one into the dirt for a ball three. Variety Davidson looking to add his third hit in his fifth plate appearance today. The payoff with two outs, Pappas deals, pitches just inside. A close call for the home plate umpire, but Davidson will reach first base, will reach base for the third time today, fourth time today I should say, with another walk. Another pinch hitter for the Jumbos, it will be John Fritz, the junior outfielder out of Andover, Massachusetts, getting a turn at the plate. The Jumbos looking to see what they got out of some of their bench pieces with their lead firmly intact at 10. Pappas sets the runner on and deals. Pitch is grounded to third. And they'll make the play at second from Posse over to Moniz. So that is the end of the seventh inning. One run, sorry, no runs were scored. Lead still at 10 for the Jumbos as they got to experiment with some pinch hitters in that frame. We'll see what the defensive alignments look like as we transition. Top of the eighth coming your way here on JumboCast.
Two innings left to play. Justin Wells on the mound once again has had a very efficient day. Through two and two-thirds innings of scoreless work, oh, no hits allowed in this brilliant relief appearance for him so far. Wells will have the heart of the order to face on the side of the UMass Dartmouth Corsairs. It will be Bryant, Perone, and then Keefe. That ball gets past Bowman. Count 2-0. and oh. Bryant on the day is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Has flown out twice as well. Now as a hitter's count here, 2 and 0, check swing, did go, strike 1. Wells with 2 Ks and 2 and 2 thirds innings of work and close to another one there as that one is swung on and missed by Bryant. UMass Dartmouth will have some time to reset themselves a bit. A doubleheader against Bridgewater State, I believe, this Saturday. Two balls, two strikes, none away. Wells will deal. Pitch hits Bryant. On a cold day like this, that one stings just a little bit more. Andrew Bryant going to reach first base on a hit by pitch. And so a slight blemish to what's otherwise been a good outing so far out of Justin Wells, a runner on first base, as now the cleanup hitter for the Corsairs in Perone will come to the plate. Pitch is in there for a strike. Perone has been one of the shining lights in what has otherwise been a relatively dark day so far for the Corsairs. One for two with a walk is responsible for the one run batted in, and he's going to get another nicely hit ball, but Fleischer is right there on to second. The throw to first. It's a double play. 6-4-3 once again. A nice play from Fleischer to Fleckner over to Davidson, and there's two outs here in the eighth. A nice piece of hitting out of the cleanup hitter, DJ Perone, but the Jumbos were positioned brilliantly on the defensive end. The double play def paid off. Fleischer got a hold of that grounder, and they made quick work. Ball lined into center field. Duffy will play that one off the bounce as a base hit comes through for Keefe. And so another base runner is on here for the Corsairs. If that ball did go through for a hit by Perone, could be looking at a very different situation. It would be three runners on, bases loaded, nobody out. But instead, a tough situation for Posse. He's going to swing at that first pitch, loop it into shallow right field. Long run, not going to be able to be played by Fleckner. As Keefe will advance to second base, it's a single for Andrew Posse. As now two runners will beyond three base runners allowed for Wells in his third inning full third full inning sorry I should say of work but now has a runner on on second base and first base scoring opportunity for Tempone and of course you can never rule out a team although no, no matter what baseball is a timeless game you have four outs to work with, can potentially put up as many runs as you want. Tempone has had a good job has done a good job today of getting on base, is 0 for 1, but with has two walks. We try to work the count here against Wells. They have Moniz followed by Cromack if they get there in the lineup. Lefty on lefty, the pitch gets way outside and past Bowman. Both runners will advance. And now a base hit could score two from Tempone. So Wells coming apart, falling apart a little bit here after having a very, very successful first three innings of work. Wanting to avoid giving up some more runs to the Corsairs. And Bowman, after that wild pitch, wants to talk things over with his pitcher.
Rain hopefully has stopped for the good here in Medford. Of course, I'm going to knock on wood right here because it has gone away and come back multiple times. My score sheets are very fragile at the mo at the moment. Uh, I've been unable to keep book due to them falling apart nearly. Um, don't believe my pencil would be able to do much work onto that. A very convincing game so far for the Jumbos. Of course, their last game was a, a strong one as well, as they've won 9-3 to three over Brandeis. But this would even add on to that as they look to stay undefeated here in Saul Gittleman Park. 1-2 and two is the count to Tempone, looking to potentially add a couple of runs onto the board for the Corsairs. Well sets and deals. 1-2 is down in the z down and away. Count now 2-2. Two and two. Keefe at third. Posse at second. Tempone at the plate. What could potentially be his last at-bat of the day. 2-2 two, two from Wells is fouled back. We'll do it again. The lights have been on, the newly acquired lights here at Gittleman Park. Of course, the previous Huskins field were without it. Hopefully means that we'll have some games under the lights as we return from our spring break in, next, in a couple of weeks here at Tufts University. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Justin Wells will deal. Pitch is upstairs, three and two. So we'll have to be careful now. Wells... Of course, has first base open. Doesn't want to give up a meatball down the middle, despite there being three balls and two strikes. Two runners in scoring position. Tempone has a big opportunity for the Corsairs. The pitch is down and away, and the bases are now loaded for Jacob Boniz. So Wells in a bit of a jam. Out comes Coach Svagdis, and it looks like the Jumbos are going to be heading to their bullpen with Wells unable to complete this eighth. Three and a third innings, responsible for all three runners on base, but currently at the moment has yet to allow one to score. Two hits, one walk, two strikeouts. Overall, a solid outing for Justin Wells. as he will end his outing here. New pitcher in for the Jumbos. We'll be right back. Jumbos have four outs left to record if they want to walk away here with a win at Gilman Park. Entering the game uh, with the bases loaded with two outs in the eighth is Jack Schwartz, their captain, the senior out of Wayland, Massachusetts. Schwartz in 12 games played in 2022, 22.1 innings pitched at the 3.22 ERA. Had one inning in 
uh, their first game against MIT, relieving Cameron Mayer. And now in a bit of a jam. Base is loaded as they were left here by Justin Wells. Jacob Moniz comes to the plate. A big opportunity for the freshman. I mean, it's just one swing, and this game could change dramatically. Pitches in there for a strike. Moniz has come in the clutch, come through in the clutch before. 0 for 1 with two walks so far today. Schwartz will deal. Pitch fouled out of play. Moniz's last game against Wentworth, again, was very, very impactful. Two RBIs, two runs scored, and a two-run ball game was instrumental in their team's ninth straight victory. One ball, two strikes. Pitchers count for Schwartz. The ball is in the dirt. Nice stop by Bowman. TJ Keefe is at third base. Three stolen bases on the season, so can be a factor on the base pass if the ball does get past Connor Bowman. Fortunately for the Jumbos, that has not happened very often this season. 2-2 two -two count. Base is loaded here. Schwartz deals. Swing and a miss. Strike three. So the senior, Jack Schwartz, comes through in the clutch as the Corsairs leave the bases loaded in the eighth inning. Multiple offensive opportunities just unable to be capitalized on. Schwartz will bail out Wells off of a crucial strikeout onto Moniz. We head to the bottom of the eighth. What could be the Jumbo's last time at the plate today? We'll be back in just a few. Pitching change here for the Corsairs as they are down 10 runs entering the bottom of the 8th inning in a non-conference matchup against your Tufts University Jumbos. Number 42 for the Corsairs, Gavin Rodman getting a chance on the mound. The six foot, 140 pound freshman out of South Kingstown, Rhode Island getting an opportunity here. Jumbos have not scored in their past two chances in terms of innings. They'll have, once again, the bottom of their lineup. Jackson Duffy is due up, but Johnny Briety will get the opportunity in a pinch hit fashion to lead off the bottom of the eighth. Bridey, junior out of Ridgefield, Connecticut, eight played eight at bats in 2022, went one for eight with an RBI double in that one opportunity that he did have. Swings at that first pitch for strike one. Bridey did have a pinch hit appearance back 
against MIT. I believe he did strike out in that at bat, though. Rodman upstairs, ball one. Righty versus lefty action here. Rodman trying to work through this eighth inning for UMass Dartmouth. The pitch down and away. Count two and one. Upstairs. Hitters count now for Bryady. First appearance of the season, first appearance of his collegiate career for Gavin Rodman. Three balls, one strike. Pitch to Bryady is in the dirt for ball four. So a base runner on for the Jumbos, Ozzie Fleischer coming to the plate. UMass Dartmouth has utilized a ton of pitchers this season for certain opportunities here and there. Of course, have played their fair share of double headers and back to backs due to their Florida road trip. So, always when you're down there, it's game after game, baseball all the way through 24 7. So, having enough pitchers ready, always a good thing, but. Rodman was not utilized in that sense. UMass Dartmouth last season did utilize a lot of players both in fielding and pitching roles. Have seemed to subside on that for now, at least so far early on in this season. The one exception is the senior Adam Horowitz has had a couple of pitching appearances as well as some time at the plate. Jumbos looking to have their third straight win here. Pitch to Fleischer in the dirt, ball two. As if the results hold, UMass Dartmouth will fall to 9-1 and one on the season. Of course, I've yet to enter Little East Conference play, but you wonder what this means for each of these teams. Of course, the Corsairs have been exceptional on the offensive end so far in this season throughout their road trip and kind of were stopped here pretty significantly by the Jumbos. Two balls, two strikes, none away. Bryady leads off of first base. The pitch. Outside, they check the runner. They check to see if the batter went. Umpire says no. Fleischer held up, and there's now a full count with none away. Rodman sets from the stretch and deals. Pitches upstairs. That is ball four. Ball gets past the catcher of Tempone. Bryady not going to look for another base off of the one that he just got off the walk. And there'll be runners on first and second. New pinch run, sorry, new pinch hitter for the Jumbos here. Taking the spot of Fleckner is the infielder, the freshman Jesse McCulloch. Sudbury, Massachusetts this is his hometown. Attended Lincoln Sudbury Regional High School. I believe this is his first appearance of the season. And again, Coach Svagdis, an opportunity for him to see some new pieces that, of course, are. New to the team, being freshmen, of course. McCullough getting an at-bat. McKiernan in right field right now. And honestly, of course, you want to take every opportunity you can get as a freshman. You don't really care if about the current score. You see a runner in scoring position and want to try to capitalize on that. Ball gets past Tempone, and Bryady, the speedy base runner, will get over to third base. Fleischer advancing to second as well, so now two runners in scoring position for the freshman. McCullough stands at 5'9", 170 pounds. Left the righty batter against the righty Rodman. 
pitch is taken down low for a ball. Count now 2-0. and Runners on second and third in what has been a jumbo-centric affair, to say the least, at Gittleman Park. A 2-0. McCulloch takes a big hack and misses. 2-1. and one. You assume that Jesse McCullough will take Henry Fleckner's spot in the infield for the top of the ninth inning. The 2 1. Grabs him on the, nicks him on the shoulder, and a hit by pitch from Rodman. So, not the start um, to his collegiate career you'd want to see out of Gavin Rodman. Unfortunately, has yet to record an out, has, I believe, walked two and hit one. And now the top of the jumbo lineup is up. A good opportunity, of course, for the freshman pitcher to make his way out of a jam, but going to be a tough spot off of a, a tough team that has been incredible offensively today. Leonard takes one outside for a ball. So McCulloch in his first plate appearance of his collegiate career will uh, maybe have a bit of a mark to show for it later tonight as that ball hit him pretty firmly and squarely on the shoulder. Solomon on deck. Ben Leonard up to bat. Pitches in the dirt again. Nice stop by Tempone, but you can see that Rodman is having a difficult time finding the strike zone. The 2 1. Just outside. It's a nice spot, but Rodman now faced, facing a 3 and 1 count. Infield and double play depth right now. Seems like they're willing to allow the run to score if it gets them two outs. Pitch is upstairs, and Rodman is going to walk in a run. Leonard with an RBI based on balls. Bridey comes in to score, and the score is now 12-1 to in favor of the Jumbos. And that might be it for Gavin Rodman. An unfortunate first outing here for the freshman pitcher. Two walks, three walks, and a hit by pitch uh, are the results here for the Corsair. He will exit the game, but always a nice opportunity to get a collegiate, some collegiate baseball action under your belt. What hopefully is a, a long and exciting career for Gavin Rodman. The new pitcher in is Carter Scoville, the freshman out of East Hampton, Connecticut. Seems like both teams trying to See what they got out of some of the younger players early on in the season. Of course, non-conference play, not going to affect the record or playoff implications for either of these teams too much, but could, of course, be a tiebreaker in potential situations where conferences play, when conference play is tied or some other situation, but also just to get some good experience for some of these players. Scoville has played in one game so far. Um, in one third inning of work, allowed one hit, one run scored, but it was unearned. Also walked two, facing three batters. So, second appearance here for the freshman. as he will have Patrick Solomon followed by, I believe, Owen McKiernan taking Jimmy Evans' spot in the lineup. Base is loaded. No way. None away. And if you are Scoville here, Maybe just best to pretend the runners don't exist. 
Instead, just try to focus on getting the outs yourself here. A good opportunity to play some collegiate baseball, and hopefully for him, he makes good use of the opportunity. Solomon takes one in the dirt. Patrick Solomon, in his sixth plate appearance today, unfortunately has not had too much offensive success. Sack bunt, but four uh, putouts, including two Ks for the jumbo third baseman. Hanging breaking ball in there for a strike. Patrick Solomon looking to get off and running offensively is 0 for 11 to start the season. And he's going to take strike two. Scoville starting forced to start from the stretch with the bases loaded. Of course, none of those runners his responsibility. Solomon will swing. That ball is skied into foul territory. The count will stay one and two. The one two. Down low. Count will even up at two. Solomon will stay alive as a nice at bat being worked between him and Scoville. Two balls, two strikes, no outs recorded here in this bottom of the eighth. The pitch to Solomon inside. Count will go to three and two. Fleischer is on third, McCulloch at second, Leonard at first. The pitch popped up into foul territory. Going to be a long run for Keefe. He dives but is unable to make the play. And Solomon will return back to the batter's box to do it again to count three and two. Despite the inclement weather, a decent amount of fans showing up today at Gittleman Park. Of course, also being a weekday in the middle of the day. Payoff pitch is fouled back. So a nice at-bat being worked by Patrick Solomon. This is what you want to see out of a player who's struggling. Even, of course, if the, the end result isn't necessarily um, Solomon getting on base. Being able to work these counts is going to be a good thing. You can... Chalk this one up as a good at-bat regardless of the result. 3-2. Pitch is grounded straight back to the pitcher. They're going to try to make the play at the plate. On to first. Keefe gets them in time. The call is a 1-2-3 double play. Solomon, not too sure if that was, you know, if he got there in time or not. But a nice play. Scoville making use of that PFP practice. Gets that grounder right back over to Tempone. The play over for a double play. So no run score off of that endeavor. McCulloch advances to second. Leonard, at, sorry, McCulloch advances from second to third. Leonard now at second base. As McKiernan comes to the plate. Had a fly out, I believe, in his first at bat of the day. Scoville deals, ball in the dirt. Another nice stop by Tempone, who's had a pretty tough workload today. Some balls getting by him, but overall, the catcher uh, who played majority of the games behind the dish for UMass Dartmouth in 2022, showing that he still got it. Pitch to McKiernan is down for a ball. Count two and one. Scoville with two quick outs after the double play, working to looking to try and finish off this eighth. He gets a called strike, and is now one strike away for getting Corsair, getting the Corsairs to the plate for what could be their last time today. 
if they don't want it to be that, they're going to have a very long time to, to work with as McKiernan does go down on strikes. So one run allowed off of the walk on to Ben Leonard. But Scoville able to work through a, a, you know, a pretty effective inning after being put in relief. Had a double play and then a strikeout to finish things off. Brendan McFall will come to the mound for the Jumbos to try and close this one out. Score Tufts 12, Corsairs 1. Last opportunity for the Corsairs to put on some runs in the top of the ninth. They, of course, face a very large mountain to climb if they want to get their way back into this game and earn their 10th straight victory. 11 runs is the target with three outs left to go. They have Cromack and then the top of the order for the Corsairs. Entering play at the mound is the graduate student, Brendan McFall. You wonder why the Jumbos are utilizing some of their stronger relievers here in a game that is relatively in control for themselves, but the Jumbos, of course, want to make sure that potentially McFall will stay fresh. Had a good outing in relief against Brandeis, coming to the mound again to try and finish this game off. In terms of some defensive replacements for the Jumbos, McCulloch will enter second base, replacing Fleckner as he pinch it for him there. In right field is Johnny Briety, and shifting over to center is... Of course, number 36, Owen McKiernan, who struck out in the last at-bat. Scott Cromack will come to the plate. The last opportunity here for the Corsairs. Cromack 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a ground out. McFall has started this season off as a starter, sorry, started his career off as a starter, or at least played the last couple of years in that starting role. Transitioning to the bullpen for what is probably his last season as a jumbo, using that extra year of eligibility given due to the COVID season. Throws hard. That fastball definitely has some zip to it as it goes in there for a strike. McFall struggled a little bit in that starting role last season. So now... Moving over to the bullpen, Silas Reed transitioning from a reliever to a starter is kind of the decision that Coach Svagdis made given his pitching situation. But McFall so far has been pretty effective in the games that he has been out of the bullpen so far. Had 1.2 innings of scoreless work. Count now 1 and 2. The pitch upstairs to Cromack. Two balls, two strikes. The veteran deals. In there, caught looking, strike three. First out recorded in the ninth. McFall is two outs away for getting the victory in for his team. Corsair's back around for the fifth time today. Brett Baker at the plate. as he takes one upstairs for a ball. 
Brett Baker is one for four with a single and a strikeout. The 1 0 from McFall. In there for a strike, grabbing that inside corner. Brendan McFall certainly has a lot of power. Speed off of that fastball, definitely noticeable in terms of a difference between what we've seen, at least in these past couple of innings. Swing and a miss from Baker, count one and two. As the freshman looking to add his second hit to the ball game, takes that one upstairs, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. McFall from the windup delivers. Swing on and miss, strike three. So two strikeouts for Brendan McFall as he gets Baker swinging. And UMass Dartmouth has their last out to play with. To the plate comes, of course, the right fielder who came in as a pinch hitter or defensive replacement, Andrew Clotier. One at bat entering this game has, of course, had another one. McFall deals in there for a strike. Clotier was caught out looking in his second plate appearance of the season. McFall swinging a miss. And UMass Dartmouth is down to their last strike. One and two. McFall on the one two. In there for a strike. Right at the knees, Clotier was caught looking, and Brendan McFall will strike out the side to close out the game for the Tufts Jumbos. They take this one 12 to 1 over the UMass Dartmouth Corsairs. The Corsairs fall to 9 and 1 as they suffer their first loss of the season. Their nine game win streak to open things up has been snapped. And the Jumbos remain undefeated at Saul Goodman Park. They extend their record to 3 and 0 and head on the road tomorrow. And what has been it's what's going to be a relatively busy week for them. They face against they face off against Eastern Nazarene at three PM, followed by Johnson and Wales here back at Gittleman on Wednesday, of course weather permitting. As that will be the last game for this baseball team before they head onto the road. Claremont, California is the destination. They have a doubleheader against Promona Pritz, Pitzer as they will face off against some nice West Coast teams during the Jumbo Spring Break. A great offensive showing overall. The pitching locked things down, led by Connor Pedeswa, who picked up the win for the Jumbos in his second appearance. And that's going to do it for us here at JumboCast. Final score, once again, 12-1. to 1. Thank you to everybody on the crew who has helped us out, including Jordan Burke, who is currently not here, alongside Ethan Ito and Max Antonini. And, of course, thank you to all of you watching at home. We hope that this broadcast was... An entertaining one here for you at JumboCast. Of course, we have more action coming your way over these next couple of days. Lacrosse game tomorrow. The Jumbo's baseball team will be back here at Gittleman Park to face off against Johnson and Wales on Wednesday, March 15th. But that's going to do it for us here. For all of us here at JumboCast, we'd like to say so long. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Go Jumbos.